host Jovanka and I'm currently at grade 5 and today I'm going to read you a story about The Promised Neverland. The Promised Neverland is a story based on the Japanese show and I'm very excited to read you the story. Hope your ears are ready. This orphanage starts off its day with the bell at 6 o'clock. Wake up everyone, it's time for breakfast. And we'll be late for breakfast, you know, Emma said. I have been an orphan for 10 years, but suddenly I'm the oldest child. Good morning, Dawn. Good, we aren't gonna be late for breakfast, Emma said excitedly. We are currently with 38 siblings, but we are not blood related. Good morning, Emma, said Ray. Emma sighed, are loved so much by all the family members, said Mother Isabella. My five-year-old inner side? <laughs> Thank you, mother. Emma said. Ring, it's time for breakfast, children, Mother Isabella said. Everyone sat on the tiny dining chair and ate. Enjoy your food, everyone, Mother, mother Isabella said. Everyone ate and enjoyed their meal. After that, Ray, Emma, and Norman were talking about how Connie disappeared when she got adopted. Mrs. Crone decided to join in the conversation. Children, what are you talking about? Mrs. Crone asked. We're just talking about how Connie disappeared when she got adopted. Ray said. Oh, we're still wondering about that as well. Just remember, don't go in the gate, she, Mrs. Crone said. Turns out Mrs. Crone and Mother Isabella actually know how she disappeared. At 9 p.m., Ray was talking to Emma in the library until Norman came in. Huh? Why are you here, Norman? Ray asked. I was here to read a book for Phil so that he could sleep, Norman said. Oh, you're welcome to our conversation then, said Emma. No need, I just wanted to get this book and read it to Phil as a bedtime story said Norman. All right then, suit yourself, said Emma said while smiling. Norman smiled back. At 12 a.m., Emma heard Mrs. Crone and Isabella talking. She heard them talking, saying, remember, once they get adopted, they're gonna be me and get eaten by demons. Emma, Emma was shocked and told Norman, Gilda, and Ray the next day. Guys, guys, Mama Isabella and Mrs. Crone were talking last night saying that when we get shipped out, we're gonna be me and become demon's food, Emma said. Yeah, we're gonna be eaten by demons, Dawn said. I oh, I already know that, said Ray. How did you know? Everyone screamed. Uh, um, I heard them talking about it yesterday, Ray said. We know when, when you're lying, Ray, Emma said. Yeah, tell us the truth, Ray, Gilda said. Ugh, fine. Me and Mama were really close to each other since she gave birth to me. But when you guys came out, she told me to not tell anyone that we were teaming the, the teaming up the whole time. Please don't tell anyone about this conversation, Ray said. We won't, everyone else said. Mama Isabella found out and wanted Emma to be upset for revenge. A few hours later, Isabella announced Everyone, gather up. Tom tomorrow, Norman is gonna, gonna get adopted, Mama said. Emma started to tear. Emma started to tear up. Hours later, Emma, Norman, Dawn, Gilda, and Ray were playing tag outside with Isabella. Everyone got caught except for Norman and Emma. Isabella ran after Emma, but she ended up in a corner. Isabella quickly realizes Norman was behind her. <laughs> because I love you, I don't want you to suffer. I don't want to have make you all suffer. A warm home filled with love and delicious food. 
Without knowing hunger, coldness, or even the truth, you can die with a satisfying feeling, Isabella said. I don't need any fake smiles. Even if, if I suffer, I will live freely. I decided my, for myself what happiness is, Emma said. I quit being a good boy, Norman said. Emma tries to get her clock, but Isabella decided to break her leg. Emma screamed as loud as possible, and Norman tried help helping, but Isabella pushed him away. At 9 p.m., Isabella got the adoption outfit ready for Mrs. with Mrs. Crohn. Is this perfect enough? Mrs. Crohn asked. Yes, it's perfect. Go set up the stuff downstairs. We gotta hurry. We got. We don't have much time, Isabella said. Okay, Isabella, Mrs. Mrs. Crohn said, in a sight of being tired. So we're at 5 a.m., everyone woke up. Norman was ready. What Norman was ready. Everyone was downstairs to say goodbye to him. Go try and, es and escape once you're already near the gate, Norman. Emma whispered to Norman. Norman said, I got this, Emma. Don't worry. Isabella finally came and everyone said goodbye to him and hugged him. Emma, with the cast on her leg, decided to run off to Norman and hug him once again. She And she ended tearing up and started to cry a lot. And Norman went out of the house with Isabella. When they reached the gate, Norman was ready for his plan, so he walked in to the demon shack and pretending and pretended no nothing happened. A few hours later, Emma caught Ray pouring gasoline on himself so that he could burn himself. Ray, what are you doing? Emma screamed. I'm just pouring gasoline on myself so I can burn myself, since why not? Ray said. No, you're gonna die. Everyone's gonna get worried about you. Stop. Emma screamed. Ray pulls, Ray pulls out a lighted match. And Emma quickly slaps Ray to prevent him from getting killed. After that, the whole house got on... Fire and everyone quickly as got out safely. Everyone knew what happened if you got adopted, so they quickly escaped through the back door. Except for Emma and Ray, they quickly ran into the bathroom and cut their ears since Isabella and Crohn can see their location there. After that, they quickly got clothing hangers and ran to the back door. After they quickly ran to the back door, they quickly climbed onto a wall and ziplined with the clothing rack. A few minutes later, Isabella came with a smile on her face and untied her hair, saying, I hope you guys live a, su a, su a successful life, especially you, Emma. Emma quickly gives her a straight face and ziplines to the other side the end thank you for listening to my story